Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. Another day, another video. Make sure to like and subscribe below as always, my friends. And the head coaching search is coming to a head. It's getting kind of crazy. A lot of guys went off the board today on Thursday afternoon, Thursday morning. Uh, Matt Eberflus from the Colts, you know, he's being off, he's off the board now. Uh, Nate Hackett, OC is going to the Bears. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of movement going around in the NFL right now. Um, Dan Quinn elected to stick with the Cal the Dallas Cowboys. So he's off the board as well. And, you know, now we have the Brian Flores, you have Patrick Graham, you have Brian Dable, and, you know, we have a couple other options, uh, for the giants and it's getting kind of crazy. Leslie Frazier, another one from the bills and Saturday morning is the prospective date that we should expect a new head coach. Now we don't know who's going to be yet, but we want to take a look at the updates. We want to take a look at who's leading this thing. We want to take a look at the rumors regarding Dable and the Miami Dolphins. You know, how legitimate is that? The connections um, in, in the, in the inter, interworkings between who would be a better fit for the Giants? Would it be a Flores? Why is Flores, why is his name such a big proponent of this search right now? Um, is Dable still leading the search um, in general? But it's really interesting. There's a lot going on. Anything could really happen at this point, Anthony. But before we dive into the updates and good stuff, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, and it looks like it's going to come down to Brian versus Brian. You know, I think we said that a couple episodes ago. That's what it's starting to look like. You know, as Dan Quinn now off the board withdrew his name from all head coaching vacancies. Right, he's just going to stay defensive coordinator of the Cowboys. Honestly, I think that's the best move for his career because he just had such a resurgence over there as the DC in Dallas this past season. Probably best for him to continue to build on that and then get hit with a really good coaching job next year. So. Good for Dan Quinn, I guess, and good for Giants fans because I know the majority of them did not want Dan Quinn. I wasn't that opposed to it, but most Giants fans were. Some of you had really strong opinions. Of course, Hackett to the to the Bears, and of course, a whole lot of – I mean, Hackett to the Broncos, sorry. That was, that was the Broncos, fault. sorry. No, Hackett to the Broncos and a whole lot more going on. But Brian Dable now not getting that second interview until next week in Miami. That is huge for the New York Giants, Okay. Because we were saying, we were reading a bunch of reports that were saying that Brian Dable was the leading candidate for the Miami Dolphins, and they're not even having him in again until early next week. Decision makers are still split over there in Miami is what I was just reading. There's not a consensus on the number one candidate in that building for the head coaching position. There's a bunch of decision makers that are unable to come to an agreement. So they're going to go into next week, and that leaves the door wide open for the New York Giants basically to just select whoever they want as head coach. And of course, interviewing with Flores today, they already had two interviews with Dable. They have a second interview upcoming with Leslie Frazier. So they really have the opportunity to just make it their pick from all of the candidates that they have and say, screw you, Miami. We're going with our guy, and you can do whatever we, you want with our little pieces of litter. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that was my apologies. He is going to the Broncos, Nathaniel Hackett. Um, and this is kind of, kind of getting interesting really quickly, right? Because as you said, the Dolphins are actually bringing in Dable um, for a second interview next week. So the Giants have the the kind of advantage, the leverage in the situation. They can go out and get whoever they want because the head coaching search for other teams that are in need clearly um, is taking a little bit longer. They're really casting a little bit of a wider net. And the Giants, in in turn, have an opportunity to get their guy early. Now, Hackett, they never interviewed, right? They didn't interview really – I don't even think they interviewed Dan Quinn a second time. It was only that first time um, this week. And then he was like – after he went to the Giants interview, he was like, you know what? I'm going back to Dallas. I don't know what the Giants said to him, but he was like, screw this. I'm going back to Dallas. Um, maybe he was like, you know, I just want to beat the shit out of these guys, but who knows? So at the end of the day, I still think Brian Dable's leading the charge. I still think he's the head man to, to get this job. And the reason is simple in my opinion, Anthony. The logic is sound. Um, I – personally believe, and I want to get your take on it, if you're listening on YouTube or the podcast, I'd love to hear your opinion as well. I think that the connection between a general manager and a head coach is essential. Being lockstep synergized is essential for success, especially sustained success, because having cultural differences, having different uh, opinions about drafting, like it all ends up kind of creating a, a sour relationship. We saw though Brian Flores and Grier um, in Miami. Now, there's the interesting like component to this uh, Brian Flores situation, right? Because everybody knows he wants Deshaun Watson. This is not this is not out of the out of the blue. Everybody knows he was pushing for Deshaun Watson hard for Miami yesterday during Joe Shone's, uh Shane rather his first press conference. John Mara said Deshaun Watson, no way we're trading for him. The legal allegations, the the cap situation is just not going to work for us. Um, and with that being said, does, is Flores like you know what? I don't want to go to a team that doesn't want Watson. You know, is he going to freak out and say, I want Watson um, and push and push uh, Joe Shane when he doesn't need, when he doesn't really want that kind of pressure on him? 
Who knows? Uh, but then again, on the other side of that, the flip side, um, John Mara reached out to uh, Flores and said, you are our top candidate for us. Every single candidate the Giants interviewed for the GM spot had Flores as a finalist for their head coaching position. And they reached out to the, the Dolphins organization and they had nothing but great things to say about him. I think it was just the, the interworking relationship between the GM and head coach. But with that being said, if that is such a big deal, if that is such an important factor, Joe Shane and Brian Dable make the most sense in my opinion. That connection coming from Buffalo, clearly um, they have a ton of experience. Now Buffalo has not made the Super Bowl. They're still they're still struggling to get there. They had some bad luck. It was really the, fl the flip of a coin toss that did, that was the differential between making um, the, cha the division game and not, or the championship rather. So that is a really big kind of component in this search. Anthony, would you prefer the interworking relationship? We know the established connection between Dable and Shane or – do you like the experienced head coach in Brian Flores? Three years of experience. He, the players like him. Um, he's a tough head coach. He's a great defensive mind. A little bit different than the offensive style the Giants and fans kind of need right now. Um, but again, the experience. That's one thing that stands out to me that I am definitely scared of. The, the Giants haven't really had many head coaches aside from Pat Shermer for a year or two in Cleveland. With head coaching experience, Flores has proven he can win games, even with a lackluster uh, team at times. So that's kind of like the tipping point. If, if Flores had no experience, I'd be like Dable all day, no, no questions asked. But because of that, I am a little concerned. I'm also a little, uh, you know, concerned the fact that the Giants did bring in Mike McDaniel for for a, a head coaching interview. That was kind of strange for me. Um, he's getting a second Ooh. one with the Dolphins. I'll say I don't think that's that strange because the Giants seem to have their choices kind of picked out, their top coaches already picked out. And if they want to go with uh, Mike McDaniel, they have to continue to wait until his team is eliminated from the playoffs. And the 49ers are in serious Super Bowl contention. So it could be another three weeks because you got this upcoming week, the bye week, then the Super Bowl. If it does go that far for the 49ers, they would have to wait three more weeks to even hire their general manager. The Giants don't have that time to waste. They have to get started, have to get to work immediately, especially because they just got a brand new general manager in the door. For a team like the Dolphins, they can wait. They've got their GM in there. They've got a really, really great number of talented players on their roster. So they can wait a little longer than the Giants who really need to get things going immediately. But of course, Mentioned a lot of candidates there. One thing that I'll say, though, in terms of Brian Flores versus Brian Dable and Joe Shane's synergy with those guys, right? We know that we presume he would have synergy with Brian Dable. That's his number one guy from all of the reports we're seeing. Brian Dable is the man for Joe Shane. He wants to work with them, and they clearly have some sort of communication and agreement to work together if it, you know, if it cracks that way. But also keep in mind. Joe Shane used to be a member of the Miami Dolphins at one point in his career. He did work with the Dolphins, and he worked with GM Chris Greer. They know each other. He has information on Brian Flores. He probably knows a lot on Brian Flores from Chris Greer. I know that Joe Shane reached out to um, certain members of the Miami Dolphins and asked for opinions on Brian Flores. And as you mentioned, Alex, it's all been glowing reviews. They're all very... They're like, okay, he wasn't a fit here, but that doesn't mean he won't be a fit with you. We really like him. So even though we're like, yeah, synergy will be there with Dable and Shane. That's not to say that Synergy would not be there for Shane and Flores. Just because Synergy was not there for Flores and Greer doesn't mean it would be the same thing with Joe Shane. Now, it's very possible. Brian Flores, maybe he's just hard to work with. Maybe he'll never find a general manager that he becomes buddies with and has a good working relationship with. But maybe he goes to the New York Giants, teams up with Joe Shane, and they have a phenomenal working relationship, and they build a really good football team together. That's a possibility, okay? They already have some sort of knowledge of each other. They've worked in the same organization before, so they've probably got similar principles and mindsets when it comes to evaluating football players. So you know what? A lot of people are really worried about the synergy thing with Joe Shane and, and uh, Brian Flores, but Joe Shane would not make this hiring if he wasn't confident that Brian Flores and him could get the job done together. So if they do ultimately hire Brian Flores, I'm not going to cite issues with the GM as one of my problems or one of my, you know, kind of issues with the hiring. Because the thing is, man, if if Joe Shane is making the hiring, he's clearly confident that there aren't going to be any headbuttings or arguments in, in the in the war room on draft night. So I, that's kind of my take on that aspect of it. But with Brian Dable, I think we can all say we're more confident in the fact that him and Joe Shane would be on the same page. And ultimately, that's why we think he's the head coaching favorite. That's why we think he's the favorite to get the job. And that's ultimately why I think by the end of this weekend, he will have the job for the Giants.
Yeah, absolutely. And guys, giving a big shout out to our new sponsor, DraftKings. Four teams remain in the NFL playoff hunt, and that means only four teams left for you to bet on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, counting down to Super Bowl 56. New customers can get 56 to 1 odds, 56 to 1 odds on any team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. So you bet five bucks, get 280 bucks if your team wins, and you can just, you know, go ham on the on the same game parlays. If you're not a new customer, you can experience the conference championships with the same game parlays, which I use all the time. And if you're watching the Kansas City Cincinnati Bengals game this upcoming weekend, Smash the overs on Joe Burrow. Smash the overs on Patrick Mahomes. Basically, if you go over yards on Mahomes, over yards on uh, on Burrow, and over with Jamar Chase, you're going to walk away with some cash. They're, this is going to be an offensive shootout uh, based on Kansas City's last week. Not so good. Um, basically, if you download the sport, the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now, use promo code FIRESIDE and get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. Bet just $5 and win 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's the promo code FIRESIDE. It's on the graphics and the description on the YouTube channel. Um, get free bets if your team wins. That's promo code FIRESIDE. Make sure to do that. Eligibility restrictions apply. See if DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for full details. Must be 21 plus and physically present in New York or New Jersey. If you have a gambling problem, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. Make sure to go hit up the DraftKings sportsbook app. Awesome stuff there. And I'll be smashing those same game parlays. So I'll let you guys know before the games on Sunday, which ones I'm smashing because I've actually done pretty well lately. So love you guys to get get again get in on the success as well. Um, but back to the Giants, like you said, Anthony, this is a very interesting scenario where you know Flores, Dable, and the thing is, I don't know if I'd be mad with either. W- would you be happy with either option? Like, or are you like I don't want Flores? I feel like both of them bring their strengths and weaknesses. I have a preference. It is Dable, but I'm not going to cry myself to sleep if we hire Flores. Okay, I like Flores. I think that he was. I was really shocked when he was fired by the Miami Dolphins. I thought that he was a really good coach over there. He's he's the players' coach. You know, they just all he captivated them. He got them all the rally seven game win streak this year. I thought there was a lot of improvements with that team ever since Flores stepped into that head coaching role. So I thought it was a surprise. And you know what? Maybe his career he'll always be like a bridge head coach. That's a possibility as well. At least just turns the team around. Maybe isn't the long term answer for any team. But even if he stepped into the New York Giants organization, became the head coach turned things around for a couple years and we got got us back on track and then maybe there was more butting of the heads with the GM and they, we had to move on okay at least he turned the Giants around like he did with the Miami Dolphins Dolphins fans are not upset they're happy because they're like okay he turned us around now let's swing for the fences on the head coaching position and hope we get that guy to take us to the Super Bowl because maybe they don't think that Brian Flores could have done that but I do think that Brian Flores has the ability to step in, has the experience and the leadership qualities to step into the Giants organization and turn things around. Now, I think that Brian Dable is that swing for the fence, home run, go for the Super Bowl kind of guy. And that's kind of what I like. I like to be a little more risky and go for that. But the safer option probably is Brian Flores. Yeah, and and just to finish and wrap this episode up, Art Stapleton of uh... – of was as nj.com he has some interesting stuff to say uh north jersey.com and usa today uh he said that here's another thing about brian flores interview with the giants many assume flores will describe mistakes he made in miami reported friction with Greer, oc changes ol changes etc what if flores doesn't believe he makes he made any mistakes and gives his reasons i won't assume um and then our guy brian walker of db dbacks academy said in the comments who said what he was doing in Miami was a failure? What he accomplished as a Bill Belichick disciple many haven't done. Beat the Patriots many times over, plus changed the win percentage since he got the job. And Art responded saying, criticism that followed out the door, not saying it's accurate. And uh, D-Back Academy said, in the immortal words of the great American Floridian poet Rico Ritchie, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't, you ain't popping. <laughs> so, you know, when I'm looking at uh, the Giants right now. I'm looking at Brian Flores. It's totally possible that he comes back and says, I didn't do anything wrong. Greer was just an asshole. You know, he's like, I, Greer just did not see the way I, I wanted to build a team. We didn't have the synergy. And I get that. You know what I mean? If Flores and Joe Shane are in line, lockstep, and, and know what they're going to do to build this team, I actually think Flores would do a pretty good job of doing it. Um, I just think that him and Greer were so off on so many points. And offensive-wise, I would love to get a little bit more information um, about what happened on the offensive side. Because Two, three coordinators out the door, offensive line coaches. You know, I think that's an important part. Yeah, the coaching staff turnover is my biggest concern. But to Flores' credit, they, he did have a huge disagreement with Chris Greer over the quarterback position. That is ultimately what caused that wedge in between them. 
Brian Flores wanted Justin Herbert in that draft. He wanted to draft just Justin Herbert. Instead, Chris Greer said, no, we're taking Tua Tonga Vailoa. They took Tua. Tua is a good quarterback, okay? I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's getting there. I think he has a good chance of having a solid, long career in the NFL. But Justin Herbert is a top 10 quarterback in the NFL already. And he hasn't even reached the ceiling yet. Like, he is a superstar off the rip. And that's who Brian Flores wanted. So I don't blame Brian Flores for having a lot of disdain towards Chris Greer, having a lot of frustration within that, within that organization because, you know, that's the problem. They weren't synergetic and he wanted something that he knew was best for the team and the GM didn't give it to him. And ultimately, their butting of heads ever since then ended up with uh, Brian Flores getting fired. But, you know, maybe him and Joe Shane, they see things the same way. They have a better synergy. And then they can find the right quarterback or the right whatever position player and make it work and, you know, have success in New York. So, again, like I said, Brian Dable might be my number one candidate. but And I wouldn't say it's 1A, 1B. It's probably 1 and then 2. But I I like Brian Flores. I, I wouldn't scoff at the idea of hiring him. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. But I still think Dable is in the lead here. Ultimately, him and Shane are just so close. And I think that the offensive mind that that Dable brings. And I also like his personality, by the way. There was a couple of things that I read about him that really just kind of won me over from a perspective, like a personality perspective. Um, he's kind of this like laid back, like I'll have a beer with you after the game type of guy, like a Bruce Arians kind of guy. He's not as disciplinary as Bruce Arians, but the players respect him because he cares so much about the player individually, right? Joe Judge, I felt like kind of had this this like Bill Belichickian, uh, Nick Saban disciplinary like thing that people were like, you're trying to copy. You, you kind of tell he was trying to copy other people. It really wasn't him. Um, and, he, and he punished everybody, right? He punished everybody. Like I don't think anyone got away without running laps last season. So, it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I, I kind of get the sense that he was too much of a hard ass that players lost saw him more as a dictator than they did a leader. You know what I mean? Like I think that that might have been what happened. Um, and not to say he's not a great guy because he did some really great things in the organization, helping the guy, people within the organization, like what he did for um, you know the the behind the scenes, the cafeteria workers, and they gathered money and gave them a huge bonus. I thought that was really really special and awesome of him to do. However, um, I do believe that Dable is more of a is more personable. Um, then Joe Judge, and I think that players will play for Dable instead of play out of fear of being disciplined because they didn't do well. You know what I mean? Like, there's a difference. If you've ever played an organized sport and you had a coach that was a hard ass, and you're like, if I don't play well, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna get punished. And then you play well because you're you're too nervous thinking about, well, sh- crap, like I didn't do that right. If you just want to play football and you find the passion and the fun in playing football again, like you see OBJ having fun playing football now with LA and dancing and doing his normal things, uh, but he's disciplined because the guys around him are keeping him in check and you know he's not like the star of the show anymore. Um, I, I kind of get the sense that Dable will will breathe this this passion and love for the game. Um, and maybe that's, maybe that's a reason why I like him, but I do think Flores would do similar thing. I think that he's a great, a great guy, uh, for the, for the players as well. I think him and Tua had a really strange relationship, um, that I don't know enough about. A lot of you guys mentioned that in the, in the previous video that, you know, uh, when we talked about Dable versus Flores. So I will say like, we were a little bit too harsh on Flores without a lot of information. Um, so with that being said, I do want to give him the benefit of the doubt and let him uh, give his piece to ownership and see what they say. Uh, but you know, with that being said, I'm excited, guys. We have about two days left before they make this decision. It could be tomorrow. It could be Saturday. It could be Sunday. Who knows? I doubt they're going to do it on the on the, on the the championship weekend or on Sunday, rather. So I expect it to be Saturday or tomorrow, um, which is really, really exciting. We'll obviously have all the content out, all the expectations. Then we'll start looking into offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. Ken Dorsey's a big name that keeps getting floated, but the Bills may promote him to offensive coordinator. So there's a lot of moving parts here, as always. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Fireside Giants. Make sure to go hit up DraftKings, download their sports book, and you know activate that bet. Fifty-six to one odds. Bet five bucks if your team wins, you get two hundred eighty bucks for free. Can't really go wrong there. Um, so it's really awesome. But make sure to like and subscribe the video below as always, and we will catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm-hmm.